Hello everybody, in this video we're going to cover how to book appointments for your Google Calendar. The tool we'll be reviewing is a WordPress plugin. This means that it'll only work for users with the WordPress website. So to get started, let's head over to our website page. So I'm working with a coaching site right now, and if we head over to their contact page, you'll see that they have a booking calendar as their call to action here. And if you click through their booking form, uh, you get to choose a time, a date, and enter the user information to book the appointment. Now let me show you how this is going to work with Google Calendar, along with showing you how all the features work. So if we head back to our WordPress dashboard, and I want to introduce you to the Simply Schedule Appointments plugin, after installing an activating this plugin onto your site, you can now open the appointments page, which is the dashboard for the plugin. And from here, you can manage all the appointments. You can manage the appointment types, which each appointment type technically just represents a booking calendar. And you can go over all the settings and also contact their support really easily from here as well. So if we go back to that settings tab, scroll down, you'll see that we have a Google settings card available for you here and you can toggle it on and off, but let's go ahead and edit it. So once you click edit, you'll see the Google settings screen. And from here, you're going to set up the integration between Google and the booking plugin in your site. Um, right now, I already have an account connected. It's this ssa.simplyfoxy at gmail.com account. It's the same one that we were seeing earlier, as you can see here. So I've already gone ahead and set up the integration. I won't cover how to set it up in this video, but we do have separate videos on our channel, walking you through the entire integration process. And we also have guides on the website. Um, but anyway, let me go over the different settings here. We have the Google Web Meetings toggle. You can turn this on and off depending on whether you would like to accept Google Web Meetings and generate links for each appointment. You can also choose to delete the canceled and rescheduled events. Right now, by default, when an appointment is canceled, we only add the canceled phrase to the title of the event. But if you would like to just go ahead and completely remove them, you can turn this toggle on here. We also have the refresh rate for the Google Calendar. So appointments should sync almost instantly. The refresh rate is only going to affect how often the plugin checks your Google Calendar for conflicts. Uh, so five minutes is our recommended. Just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to set it to one minute. So every minute I want them to check my Google Calendar just to make sure I'm not double booking any of my personal events. Now that we've set up and reviewed our Google settings here for the plugin, we can head back over to the appointment types tab where we're going to set up our booking calendar consultation phone call with our Google Calendar integration. So if you click into the appointment type listing, you'll see that we have an appointment type editor filled with a bunch of different tabs, but a lot of them are just mainly for you to set your schedule. For example, we have the basics tab where you set the duration of each time slot that you want the users to book. You can choose your availability and, and choose the recurring weekly schedule. You can also use the window if you'd only like to set it for a specific time frame. We have capacity as well. You can either choose a group format for your meetings or you can have an individuals book the time slots. You can also use scheduling options to tailor the settings a little further for your schedule. For example, you can choose how far in advance users can book or how many of these appointments you'd like to receive each day. Um, but what we'd like to focus on for this video is just this Google Calendar tab as well as the Web Meetings tab. So if we open the Google Calendar tab, you'll see that we have two sections here. One is for syncing the appointments with the calendar and the other one is for checking the calendars for conflicts. So the top section, you're essentially just choosing which calendar you'd like the appointments to be sent to. Right now, you can only choose a single calendar to send it to. And just to make a note, these calendars listed here all belong to the same account. For example, if I make a brand new calendar here in my Google account, I could create a dedicated calendar just for blocking off the time slots in SSA. So we can go ahead and create it. And so now it should be listed here along with my calendars. And if we head back to the settings and refresh, now, if we go to Google Calendar, you'll see that it's listed here as well. For right now, I only want to sync it to my main default calendar. Now, if we go back to the bottom section, these are all the calendars that you would like to check for conflicts, meaning if I set a blocking event in this blocking times calendar. I don't want those time slots to be booked in the plugin. So for example, if you're going on vacation for a week in October, you can create a week long blocking event in this blocking times calendar and SSA will pick up on that event and make sure you're not being booked for that time frame. Next, I also want to show you this Google invites toggle. By default, all the events are only sent to the admin, but if you would like to also invite the user who booked the appointment, you can turn on this 
toggle and we can review how that looks like when we demo um, booking an appointment. And the next thing I want to show you is the web meetings tab. If your booking calendar is for booking any virtual meetings, you can use this web meetings tab to automatically generate a Google Meet link every single time somebody books an appointment. Um, each time someone books, it will generate a unique link. That way you don't have to use the same one over each meeting that you host. So all you would have to do is select the Google Meet option here. You can also enter a custom URL or choose not to create one at all. But let's go ahead and leave this on Google Meet. Now these last tabs, if you'd like to add any custom information to collect from the user when they book an appointment, you can do so here. And then the notifications just gives you a quick overview of all the emails that are going to be sent for each appointment. So the plugin by default comes with these four notifications. So let's go ahead and save and book an appointment so that you can see how that works. Heading back to our contact page, let's go ahead and start from scratch. So let's say I want to book an appointment on Friday at 9 a.m. So once I book this appointment, we can head over to our Google Calendar page and you'll see that the event has already been generated for us. So on Friday at 9 a.m., we can see the appointment type name, the website on which it was booked on, the time slot is listed here, the Google Meet link, and the user was invited to this event as well. So the next thing I want to show you guys is we do offer a feature that allows you to customize the events that are generated by Google. Right now it's currently in a beta state, but we can easily toggle it on by going to the settings tab, scroll all the way to the very bottom and click on the developer. And right here where it says Google Calendar Events Customization, we can toggle that on and save. Now when we return to the settings, head back to our Google Settings card, now we'll see an additional toggle added to the very bottom. So this is for customizing your calendar events. Now if we toggle it on, we'll have a few different options and depending on the appointment type settings that you have created in the plugin, you may see more of these tabs. But right now I only have the option to edit the shared group event and the customer confirmation screen event. Event. So if we head back to our contact page, you'll see that here on this confirmation screen, the user has the option to save this to their Google Calendar. So that's what this top tab is referring to. For the group event that I generated with my appointment here, we'll be able to edit that from this shared group event tab. So let's go ahead and make some changes. So right now I have it set so that the event title is set to the appointment type title as well as the company name. So if we go ahead and remove this and at the very front, instead of the title, I'd like to add the customer name and then let's move that and then I'll put a dash. Now the event location, right now it's set to the web meeting link, which is Google Meet. For the event details, we have it set to the web meeting link as well as the attendees list. And then we have a reschedule URL or cancel URL added to the very end as well. But let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. So now that I'm done adjusting the title and the details, I can go ahead and save this. Alrighty, so now let's go back to our contact page and schedule a new appointment to see what that looks like. Okay, so on September 26th, we have our newly customized Google Calendar event. I have the user name at the very front, and we've also added a custom message to the details as well. Alrighty, and one more thing before we move on, I want to show you how the conflict checking feature works. So if we head back to our contact page and we choose to schedule a new appointment on Thursday the 22nd, we have the morning time slots and the afternoon time slots. So let's go ahead and create a blocking event so that the afternoon time slots are removed. So on September 22nd, we can create a blocking event. We're gonna add a time. So from 12 p.m. all the way down to five. And I just want to add it to my blocking times calendar. And the last thing I wanna make sure is that this is set to busy. I want my event to be set to busy so that Simply Schedule Appointments can register that event in the plugin. If you set it to free, the plugin will ignore it. So now that I've set it to busy, you have the option to fill in any other information in the fields here, but uh, they're all completely optional. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And so I have this blocking event set for September 22nd. So let's head back to our site and refresh the page. So if we head over to September 22nd, you'll see that the afternoon slots were completely removed.
And that's going to be about it. I hope this was helpful in helping you set up a booking calendar for your Google Calendar account and showing you how you could use WordPress to help you do that. And feel free to also reach out to our support team. We're always happy to answer any questions and let you know if this would be a good solution for your site or business. Thanks.